Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thanks for joining us again today for another edition of eWeek eSpeaks, the interview series with IT leaders here in Silicon Valley. Uh, today, we're talking to Darshan Ravel, and Darshan is the CEO of a company called Isima. Uh, it's a data management platform maker uh, based here in Palo Alto and just launched recently. So, uh, Darshan, congratulations on that and welcome to eSpeaks. Thanks a lot, Chris, and thanks for having me on the show. Sure. Tell me a little bit about your background, uh, where you come from to, uh, to start this company. Great. So yeah, I have been in the Valley for about two decades. Before the SIMA, I was head of product for a company called DataStax. And before that, uh, led product and engineering for a company called OpenWave. So I truly understood how to sell uh, enterprise grade products to telcos, retail, finance enterprises. And I firsthand experienced um, the power of data and data management in my career, uh, in, my career in the earlier phase where I was at Yahoo, I had to build machine learning in production before Hadoop and before big data was coined. And I, I have been waiting and anxious to see the impact of that in the enterprise. And um, that's the genesis of SMA. We, we looked at and spoke to a lot of Fortune 500 CIOs and came to conclusion that the last decade of big data, we might as well call it the last decade of big data. And how can enterprises outside of Silicon Valley go live was the problem we wanted to solve. So that's how Isima began. Okay, Isima, I'll remember that. Um, so you saw a, a real gap in the market that you needed to fill and it had to, it had to be sort of like post Hadoop. Uh, Hadoop does solve some uh, data management problems, but not all of them. And in fact, it causes some others for companies. <laughs> yeah. um, what does, uh, um, uh, Isma bring to the table specifically that other companies don't. And I, I know that you um, you talk this about hyper, you talk about this as hyper converged. What does that mean? Hyper converged data platform. Yeah, great question, Chris. So uh, you're right. I think technology innovations from Silicon Valley have tried to infiltrate the enterprise market for the last decade, starting with Hadoop and you know a lot of open source players. Mm -hmm. And uh, we believe that that is the wrong approach. The goal is noble uh, to deliver the innovation of the web scale behemoths to enterprises, but um, most Silicon Valley entrepreneurs do not understand the empathy uh, of the enterprise market. Uh, IT is a cost center, not a value driver. Um, and data has the power to disrupt these enterprises, but not in the way it is done. So what we did was we took a radically different approach. We looked at the last three generations of data management, the pre-big data, the open source big data, and the cloud native big data as we are living and breathing today. And essentially said, what has changed and what has remained constant in the enterprise architecture and built uh, our product called BIOS, which stands for Business Intelligence Operating System. And it's a hyper-converged data platform, which implies that from ingest to insight, you get a single platform to deliver insights, right? And that's fairly unique today because today there are at least 20 plus products in the tool chain, uh, what they call the best of breeds in the world. And we kind of were inspired by this company Nutanix, which did the same for the infrastructure market uh, and converged compute storage and networking into a simple, simple solution for the enterprise. And we're trying to do the same for data management, right? Data management for three decades has been fragmented and we're trying to bring it together. Um, does, does your solution really work with line of work for line of business type employees at a company? In other words, somebody, uh, I mean, you don't have to be an, uh, an IT person to use this. Is that true or false? That's absolutely true. And in fact, we achieved that outcome recently with the world's largest e-pharmacy. Uh, a single data analyst in the operations team was able to um, perform real-time supply chain optimization on top of BIOS. And that's really what the power of uh, hyperconverged data platform does, right? There. Beyond the technology, the outcomes that the business folks get is nonlinear. They, they are able to hire a single data analyst, not just a data scientist or some highly paid PhD from Cornell, 
um, but a single data analyst with three to four years of experience out of college and have them put something in production in a matter of weeks, right? Mm -hmm. And then keep on iterating on it. And that's really what BIOS delivers to the market. Is it all natural language queries? And um, is it a, strictly a cloud service or is it something that, um, you know, a company could put on a server and use inside a private cloud? Uh, they can deploy it anywhere. We don't believe in the plat data moving to the platform. We believe the platform should move to the data wherever the data is. And uh, we have our own self-serve platform that customers can get up and running if they're already on the cloud, um, public cloud specifically. Um, but yeah, we're not hung upon uh, where uh, it gets deployed. Uh, it's a cloud native solution that can be deployed on a hybrid cloud environment too. Do you have partnerships with different cloud providers or is it just up to the customer? It's up to the customer right now. We just launched uh, and, and we have been working with uh, mostly on Google Cloud and Amazon right now. And we're recently expanding to Azure. So in fact, we're doing a test right now with between Azure and GCP to build a true multi-cloud solution between the two cloud players. Yeah, Amazon's well known as the market leader and, and uh, Google is well known for really being for developers, but Azure has really got the momentum in the in the market right now in a lot of ways. So that's that's a smart move. Um, can you describe a use case just uh, that for one of your customers that so our so our readers, our listeners can can get a, a, a real picture of the real world example? Yeah, so um, yeah, we can we have worked with tier one telcos. We are working with a financial institution. We are working with a fintech player. But I think the one that comes to mind, and we did a webinar for it, um, which is online right now and available, is working with this e-pharmacy. It's a unicorn. Um, we started working with them at the start of COVID-19. And their job is to ship medicines, right? And pretty much what, if you, if you think Amazon cannot ship toilet paper, just imagine trying to ship medicines, right? And so they started working with us in March and they assigned one um, data analyst to this problem. And their challenge was last mile logistics is 70% the cost of e-commerce anyway. And in case of medicines, it's unique because if the order is canceled or it's delayed for whatever reason, you have bad customer experience, but you also lose the product. If the medicine is refrigerated, you shipped it and they shipped it back, you can't reship it, right? It's gone bad. So the highly regulated market, and this is what they had to solve. So what they wanted to do was when orders come in, usually the warehouse management systems pick it first in, first out. You know, as the orders are coming in, they're taking it, they're fulfilling the orders. But that doesn't work when a pandemic hits, right? You want to infuse customer segmentation, the type of medicine, chronic versus non-chronic. You have limited inventory, which order do you fulfill? all of those multivariable optimization problems have to be done in real time, right? So this uh, data analyst was able to perform real-time data engineering, source the data from multiple data sources, build a quote unquote model, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, and show to the business in a matter of weeks that they can save up to 15% of GMV from being canceled. That's a huge number yeah. for, for an e-commerce player. And they did it in a matter of weeks with one person. And to us, that truly validated uh, the power of the platform and its adoption and everything else. And we said, that's that gave us the wing to launch even in the middle of pandemic, which is why we decided to come out of stealth. Yeah, I was gonna ask you that and that explains it. Just one person put that together. Just one person. Wow, that's awesome. Um, so Isima, where'd you get the name Isima? <laughs> Great question. So Isima, I got the name from uh, Tokian. Uh, it's the, if you watch Lord of the Rings, uh, it's the Elvish language and it means imagination. So we are reimagining data management for the last three decades. So the meaning of the name Isima is imagination. Well, good for you and congratulations on your launch out of stealth. Thank and um, it looks like you're in a really good lane. Uh, Darshan, so congratulations and good luck to you going forward. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you so much. We'll really be watching enjoy. you closely from, from our perch at eWeek. <laughs> sure, sure.
Thanks. All right. Thanks again. And everybody following along on our version of East Speaks today, thank you very much and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek East Speaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.